The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Feeling low. Feeling tense. These eight words are common sense. Smoke a lucky to be your level best. Smoke a lucky to be your level best. Yes, to feel your level best. Smoke a Lucky, because Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, puts you on the right level to feel and do your level best. That's what fine tobacco can do for you. And remember, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So the next time you buy cigarettes, ask for the cigarette of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. For remember, Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. Put you on the right level to feel and do your level best. Yes, smoke a lucky to feel your level best. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, television is not only here, it's here to stay. And like other stars in radio, Jack Benny is preparing for the future. So now we take you out to Beverly Hills. At the moment, Jack is sleeping while Rochester is going about his morning chores. Well, first I better clean up the living room. Mm Mmm, what a mess. Television sure has Mr. Benny worried. Every night he rehearses a different act. But he's certainly serious about it. Last night, he even had a dancing teacher here. Imagine him trying to do that kind of a dance. Oh, well, I might as well pick up his clothes and let the air out of the balloons. (laughs) Isn't that cute? He even put an ironing board up on two chairs and used it for a runway. (laughs) Let's see, where will I put these balloons? Oh, hello, Polly. A pretty girl is like a melody. Oh, oh, were you here last night when Mr. Benning was taking his dancing lesson? (laughs) He'll be happy to hear that. Now, Polly, I'll get you some breakfast as soon as I straighten up the... Coming! Coming! Oh, good morning, Mr. Mailman. Good morning, Rochester. Well, there was too much mail to put in the box, so I thought I'd bring it in. Here are the letters. Thank you. And here are Mr. Benning's magazines. Body Beautiful. Uh-huh. Women's Home Companion. Uh-huh. True Story. Uh-huh. Lonely Hearts. Uh-huh. And this book, The Manly Art of Self-Defense. Say, I didn't know... Oh, uh, pardon me, that goes to Mike Romanoff. <laughs> well, I must be getting along. Uh, is that all the mail you have for Mr. Benny? No, I'm still carrying that letter with postage due on it. But I guess there's no use going through that again. (laughs) No, I guess not. How long ago was that letter mailed? I don't know. It was handed down to me by my father. (laughs) Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I think I'll take this mail to Mr. Benny's room. It's time he got up anyway. Mr. Benny, it's 11 o'clock. Mr. Benny, wake up. Mr. Benny! Gypsy Rose! (laughs) A pretty girl. Boss, boss, it's only me. Oh, oh, good morning, Rochester. Uh, What time is it? It's 11 o'clock. I brought you the mail. Do you want to look at it? Oh, yes, give it to me. Aren't you going to put your glasses on? I can't. I broke them last night when I fell off the runway. (laughs) I mean, the ironing board. I mean... It's all right, boss. I know. Well, Rochester, take the ironing board down and hide the balloons. I don't want anyone to know about my dancing. Now, let's see the mail. What's this one? Oh, it's from my violin teacher, Professor LeBlanc. Monsieur Benny, as you know, tomorrow I must give you a violin lesson. I will be there unless I catch pneumonia. Please excuse the writing as it is dark here in the deep freeze. (laughs) 
Open the next envelope, Rochester. Yes, sir. Oh, here's a letter from Max Factor. Max Factor? What does he say? Dear Mr. Benny, this is the third letter we have sent you reminding you of your March payment is past due. Either pay it immediately or we'll snatch it off your head. <laughs> Let him snatch it. It's got moth holes all over it. Anyway. Let's see. What's this? Mm, this is from the California Bank. It's another letter about that loan. What are you going to do, boss? I'm going to turn them down. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. Hmm, that's funny. Here's one from the barber shop on the corner. Dear Mr. Benny, we are writing to all of our customers who got shaved here last Saturday. Are you missing an ear? <laughs> P.S. If not called for in 30 days, we will add it to our collection. <laughs> is there anything else, Rochester? Just the circular. You won't be interested in it. What is it? Yeah. Hmm. Automobile prices reduced. Buy a new car now and save money. Liberal allowances on trade-ins. You know, Rochester, maybe I ought to try and... I'll get it. <laughs> oh, oh, say, Rochester... No matter who it is, don't mention anything about the new dance I've been working on. I won't. Remember. Coming! Hello, Rochester. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Come on in. Mr. Benny home? Yeah, he's getting dressed. He'll be down in a minute. Well, then I'll wait. And don't let me interrupt you, Rochester. Go ahead and finish your ironing. Ironing? Yes, you've got the ironing board up, haven't you? <laughs> well, I wasn't using that. You see, Mr. Benny was... Uh-oh. Mr. Benny was what? Well, he was, uh, uh he was, uh, he was getting ready to wallpaper the living room. Well, back home, I used to help my mother paper our house, and Mr. Benny is going at it the wrong way. It seems to me well, that... Well, well, good morning, Mary. Oh, good morning, Jack. Rochester told me what you were doing with the ironing board. Oh, he did, eh? <laughs> Rochester, I told you not to say anything about what... But, Jack, you should be glad he told me I can show you a few tricks. <laughs> You... What do you know about it? Oh, I used to do it with my mother. <laughs> what? Oh, Mama was wonderful. She used to work with a brush in each hand. <laughs> a brush in each hand? Well, didn't your father object? No, if she didn't do it, he'd have to. <laughs> Mary... Doll face, what are you talking about? Huh? Wallpapering the house. Oh, oh, wallpapering. Oh, of course. Good boy, Rochester. I'm, I'm going to do that later, Mary, but right now I'm trying to make a big decision. Uh, what big decision? Well, I just received this circular from an automobile company, and I've been thinking maybe I ought to trade in my car and buy a new one. Well, it's about time. What are you going to get, a Chandler or an Essex? <laughs> oh, don't be funny. I'm going to get a real... I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Jackson. I'm calling from the country club. I thought maybe you'd come out and play some golf. Well, I can't today. I'm going out and buy a new car. Operator, operator, you gave me the wrong number. She did not. <laughs> it's me. And I am going to buy a car. Oh, oh. What kind of a car are you going to get, Jackson? Well, I don't know. I, I was thinking of getting a Cadillac. Operator, operator, why can't I get You've the right You've got the right number. <laughs> I told you, it's me. Oh. He asked me if I wanted to play golf, and I told you I couldn't. Well, look, Jackson, I'm running a picture at my house tonight. Would you like to come over and see it? Gee, I'd love to, but I can't. You see, last night I broke my glasses. Oh, how'd you break them? I fell off the runway. Operator! <laughs> Operator, I wish you'd give me You the got ride. it! You got it! <laughs> Phil, it's me, Gypsy. I mean, Jackson! <laughs> Phil, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Phil, I'm sorry I can't play golf with you. Why don't you call Remley? I call Remley. He's right here now. Oh, Frankie's with you, eh? Yeah, he's sitting over there at the table drinking a glass of milk. Operator! Operator! <laughs> Somebody else is... No, on the... no, no, Jack. <laughs> it's me, it's me. 
Oh. Well, what's, what's this about Frankie drinking milk? Doctor's orders. Drinking too much bourbon. <laughs> oh. And that caused a shortage of calcium in his system. Uh-huh. So the doctor made him drink milk. So Frankie could get more calcium? Yeah. That'll make his teeth stronger. <laughs> Why does he want to strengthen his teeth? So he can pull the corks out of the bourbon bottle. <laughs> What? You can't gum them things, you know. <laughs> I know, I know. Anyway, I'm proud of Frankie drinking milk. Let me talk to him, will you, Phil? Okay. Hey, Frankie. Frankie. Frankie! He can't hear a thing since he got a shave last Saturday. <laughs> Phil, do you mean that... So long, Gypsy. We got eight holes to play. All right, goodbye, Phil. <laughs> I generally play 18 holes, but I guess Phil isn't as strong as I am. Uh, Mary, Phil wanted me to play golf with him, but I'm going out and look at some of those new cars. You want to go with me? Oh, sure, Jack. But while you were on the phone, Don Wilson and the sportsman came in. They're waiting for you in the library. Oh. Ah, uh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. Hiya, fellas. Mm. Uh, Don, I, I know what you're here for, but make it quick, will you? Mary and I have to leave in a few minutes. Okay. Now, Jack, we've got a wonderful arrangement of Mendelssohn's Spring Song. And as a surprise, we put in a special violin part for you. Oh, Don, really, you, you shouldn't have done that. Well, we can take it out. Oh, no, no, I've got the violin right here, <laughs> under my chin. I mean, uh, just, uh... <laughs> uh, just give me the music. Here you are. <laughs> okay, now, uh, all right, now, just a second while I, I tune up. One second, Don, I get him. <laughs> now, let's see. Um, a Mendelssohn Spring Song. Oh, yes, I, I uh, start it, don't I? Yeah, yeah, Jack. All right, uh, here we go, fellas. Mendelssohn Spring Song.
back. Huh? You can stop curtsying. The boys have gone. Oh, oh. Well, come on, Mary. Let's go downtown and look for a new car. Rochester, we're ready to go. <laughs> Rochester, the traffic's pretty heavy. Take it easy, will you? Uh, Jack, what kind of a car are you going to get? I'm not sure, Mary. You know, all the new models look so nice, and they have so many novel features. Like the Nash, for instance. I mean, the way the seats make up into twin beds. You know, maybe that's what I'll get. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You'll have the only car in the country that takes in boarders. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of that, Mary. I just thought that maybe... Say, boss, how long have we been driving? Exactly 14 minutes. You better start looking for a service station. Yeah, no time to lose. Uh, Jack, why do you have to hurry for a service station? Well, you see, Mary, every time the car drives for 15 minutes, the water in the radiator boils over, and then it takes... <laughs> Now stop the car, Roger. <laughs> well, I guess we'll just have to sit here for a few minutes until it cools off. That's about all. Say, Emily, Emily, isn't that Jack Benny over there? Where? Over there in that Stanley steamer. Ah. <laughs> that isn't a Stanley steamer. It's a Maxwell that blew its top. <laughs> then it is my dream man. Steady, girl. Steady. You really have a crush on him, haven't you? Yes. And you know, Emily, I've got a confession to make. Last February, I sent Mr. Benny a Valentine card. Did he get it? He must have. I put it in my laundry bundle. <laughs> Does he do your laundry? Yes. Oh, when I think of him ironing my petticoats with his own little hands, <laughs> I break out in goose pimples. How romantic. What did you say on your Valentine card? It was a beautiful poem. I wrote it myself. It went, Dear Jack, when I think of you this Valentine's Day, I can throw my vitamin pills away. <laughs> Well, I'll bet he didn't answer it. He did, too. He said, Your lovely poem made me shake and shiver, and starting May 1st, we pick up and deliver. <laughs> Martha, open your eyes. I think they're going to drive off. Rochester, the car should be cool enough now. Let's go. <laughs> Coming to is Figueroa. That's Automobile Row. Yeah. Turn right here, Rochester. Yes, sir. Gosh, look at all the automobile dealers on this street. Honest John, the Smiling Irishman, Madman Munts, Psychiatric Sam, <laughs> Wild Man Pritchard. Ah, here's the place we want. Just plain Bill. <laughs> Uh, stop in front of this place, Rochester. Now, Rod, you can park down the street a little ways and wait for us. Come on, Mary. Okay. Gosh, Jack, they certainly have some beautiful cars on display here. Yes, I hope this doesn't take too long. I, I wouldn't want Rochester to get a ticket. He can't afford it. <laughs> and besides, I have oh, to... Oh, here comes the salesman. Where? Oh, yes. Oh, mister... Uh, how do you do? Now, uh, how do you do? I'm thinking of buying a new car. Oh, good, good. Were you thinking of any particular type? Well, uh, would you li like a hydromatic? A hydromatic? Yes, that car comes without a clutch. Look, brother, when I pay for a new car, I want a clutch and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, this car here looks pretty good. Yes, Jack, it's really a sporty-looking number. Uh, get inside and see how roomy it is. Okay. It sure is comfortable, and... Say, what are these buttons? Oh, oh yes, uh, those are for the windows. I'll, I'll, I'll show you how they work. 
Gee. Well, didn't you know the new cars had automatic window lifts? He didn't even know they had windows. <laughs> Mary, please. Uh, what other new features do they have? Well, I'm glad you asked that. This is the only car in the market that comes equipped with a Dynaflex super-flowing Unijet turbovasculator, <laughs> which is synchromeshed with a multi-coil hydrotension duo-vacuum dynamometer. Gosh! Uh, what does that do for the car? It empties the ashtray. <laughs> That, that's quite a feature. Uh, Mary, do you think I ought to get this car? Well, certainly. I wouldn't think of having a car that's not equipped with the Dynaflex superflowing Unijet turbovascular, which is synchromesh with the multi-coil hydrotension duo vacuum dynamometer. <laughs> meter. <laughs> dynamometer. <laughs> Mary, you've mispronounced the word with. <laughs> Gee, the, the more I see of this car, the more I like it. But tell me, uh, Mr., uh, Mr... Call me Plain Bill. <laughs> uh, well, look, uh, Plain Bill. <laughs> what are all these other buttons for? Well, they're for the heater, the radio, the lights, and the top. Uh-huh. But what's this red button for? Oh, that red button is for emergencies. Emergencies? Uh, yes, like if you stall the car on the railroad tracks and the train is coming at 100 miles an hour, you press the red button. <laughs> And that gets the car off the tracks? No, it makes a reservation for you at Forest Lawn. <laughs> hmm. You know, Jack, this is one of the prettiest convertibles I've ever seen. Why don't you take it? I think I will, Mary. Uh, tell me, plain Bill... Uh, what's the, um, what's the, what's the price of this car? Uh, four thousand two hundred dollars. Uh, say, mister, do the windshield wipers on this car squirt water when you press the button? Yes. Well, squirt some on him. He fainted. <laughs> I didn't faint, Mary. Just that four thousand two hundred dollars is a lot of money. But don't forget, we do make liberal allowances on, on trade-ins. Well, my car's right outside. Suppose you come along with us and appraise it. Yes, well, I'd be very glad to. Yes. Right this way. <laughs> now, uh, uh, which one of these cars is yours? Oh, it's parked down the street a little ways. There it is right there. You mean that blue Kaiser? No, no, it's behind the Kaiser. <laughs> oh, the gray DeSoto. No, no, my car's between the Kaiser and the DeSoto. Here it is. Ah! <laughs> Well, I'll admit it doesn't look like much right now, but a little paint and polish and she'll be as good as new. What did you get, boss? A convertible or a sedan? Uh, nothing yet. This gentleman is going to appraise ours. Uh, tell me, has this car been in an accident? No. Well, then how come it bulges so much in the rear? Middle-aged spread. Don't be silly. That's the way this car was built. And it has a lot of advantages that the new cars haven't got. Yeah, if you like tea, it boils water every 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, stop. This man is a good judge of cars. Now, plain Bill, uh, get in and I'll, um, I'll show you how it runs. Come on, Mary. Uh, start the car, Rochester. Yes. needs a little... Plain Bill, where are you going? To get a whip and a chair. This thing is dangerous. <laughs> no, no, it'll be all right. Uh, try it again, Rochester. <laughs> See? I, I told you it'd be okay. Do you want me to drive around the block, boss? Uh, just a second. If I am going to appraise this car, I had better drive. No, I'll drive. You shovel the coal. <laughs> 
better let him drive, Bill. He's more used to it. Well, it's irregular, but okay. See, I told you, it rides very smoothly, doesn't it? Not bad. Uh, now, how much of a trade-in do you think you can give me on it? Well, now, let me see. There's a little rubber on the tires. The body needs a paint job. The upholstery isn't too bad. The motor runs. Look, would the deal include the car's radio? Yes, yes. Now, how much will you allow me on the car, including the radio? Three dollars. <laughs> Three dollars? Better grab it fast, Jack. The ride's made him dizzy. I will not. I wouldn't think of trading in this car for $3. It's perfect mechanically. They don't make cars like this today. Everything built to last for years and gives you excellent service. And all the way... Uh, oh, plain bill. Yes? Lemon or cream? <laughs> Lemon and mine, Mary. Mary! Now, Bill, all kidding aside, how much will you allow me on my car? Three dollars. But this car... There is no use arguing. This thing is without a doubt the oldest, worst, most beat-up piece of junk I have ever seen. Well. <laughs> that settles it. Rochester, stop the car. Plain Bill, I'll thank you to get out. Rochester, open the door. That won't be necessary. It fell off. <laughs> well, goodbye to you, sir. Goodbye. Rochester, drive on. Yes, sir. This car is good enough. I can keep it for quite a while yet. You know, boss, you're not going to get a new car. Why don't you have this one fixed up? Put some of those modern things on it. Like what? Like the Dynaflex Superflowing Unijet Turbo Vasculator, which is simply messed with the... Multi-coil, hydrotension, dual vacuum, dynamometer. <laughs> no, no, then I'd have to go out and buy an ashtray. <laughs> Step on it, Rochester. I want to go home. <laughs> Jack, we'll be back in just a moment. But first... Feeling low. Feeling tense. Lucky's Fine Tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, puts you on the right level to feel and do your level best. It's important to know that fine tobacco can do this for you. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. It's not surprising that more independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. So when you choose your cigarette, remember, Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, puts you on the right level, the lucky level, where you feel your best and do your best. Yes, the next time you buy cigarettes, ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Smoke a Lucky to be your level best. Smoke a Lucky to be your level best. off at any other car dealers? No, no, Mary. I've made up my mind. I'm going home. This car will just have to do until I get it. Jack! Jack, what happened? Your hair is gone. It's my fault, Miss Livingston. I never should have driven by Max Factors. <laughs> all right, all right. Let him keep it. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in a day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.